We all know the common widespread complaints about John Cena that have been prevalent over the past decade plus. He's the WWE's golden boy, their golden goose, and they do everything they can possible to protect him. He can do no wrong in their eyes, no matter what. And a lot of us refer to his decade at the top as a decade of disaster, a decade of terror. Some might even say a decade of doom, perhaps five moves of doom. Hmm? But at the end of the day, he rarely would ever lose, no matter how much the WWE apologist in the pro Cena camp tries to make it out to be. And even if he did, there was always an excuse, always some type of bullshit, always some type of justification or reason, some type of minimalization of said loss when it rarely did happen. And ultimately, those losses in particularly rarely came at the benefit of the other individual at the end of a program, it was Cena always had to come out on top, and you would take traditional wrestling philosophy and booking 101 and involve Cena, you would trash it every sense of the word of the way. And ultimately, John Cena became the biggest hindrance to the present of the country, company and creating new stars and the future of the company in particular. And those new stars that should have already been created, that could be at that position at the top now. And they're all valid points because they're all true. He has been the golden boy of the WWE for over a decade. He has been a prop for the WWE. And let's face it, you know, during his decade at the top, it's not exactly like WWE business was booming the entire time. You know, a lot of viewers left the WWE during his time at the top. So similar to how... We credit Hogan for being the guy in the 80s and the money drawn there and Austin and The Rock in the Attitude Era and all the money drawn there. But we point to guys at the top like Diesel and Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and we kind of hold that against them. We must do the same with John Cena as well because during his decade at the top, the WWE viewership, at least here in the U.S., has decreased by, you know, we would almost say 50%. I mean, you went from where... At his beginning, you know, maybe five plus million people were watching Raw every week to now you're just a shade over two and a half million people watching Raw every week. You know, you, you have to put that blame somewhere. And if he is the representation, he is the golden boy, then a lot of that blame lies there. And he was a money-making device, but not a money-maker in and of itself. If nothing else, the only reason the John Cena name, the John Cena brand, the John Cena character drew money is because the WWE made it that way. They would intentionally sabotage other people and their merchandise, CCM Punk, and make sure that more Cena merchandise was available, more Cena merchandise was available in more sizes at all events than anything else. So at no point in time could you sit there and really view yourself to have all the options possible. You had what the company gave you, which was a lot of Cena, Cena, Cena. And to sit there and say, well, he's the guy at the top and he's drawing money. Well, if you've never really had anybody else at the top over the course of the past decade, one, how do you know if anybody else could or could not? Two, if the viewership has dropped almost 50% since the 10 years he's been at the top, doesn't he get that blame as well? And think about a lot of the guys that have been held down by Cena, either by working programs with him or behind the scenes stuff. Uh, the pushes that have been ruined because guys have ultimately been built up just to be served to John Cena. Uh, too many to name. We all know them by now. I mean, there's a reason. It's because of the WWE and John Cena combined, they made it this way. And as a result, we have a lack of new stars. And we have a significant decrease in the overall interest level in wrestling and the fan base of wrestling over the past decade. I mean, these are all valid points. These are things we've been talking about for years. And all the incessant uh, talk about and he needs to make a heel turn. Why? So that way he can be a babyface? Newsflash. He's been a freaking heel for over a decade now. Um, but, you know, it's like... Sometimes you're happy when he just goes away for a little bit for no other reason you get a break from him and it's because you're tired of seeing him and it's a few months where somebody else can get some shine and then ultimately he'll come back and ruin it. And that's kind of the way it goes. And you shouldn't have that feeling when it's the top guy. You should feel a negative way about the top guy being gone. It shouldn't be a good thing that he's gone. And ultimately it always feels like a good thing when John Cena is out with an injury or doing some other side project for three, four months at a time. It's like a welcome relief. And that's not a good thing. But something crazy has happened recently. John Cena has been putting people over clean. He lost to AJ Styles at SummerSlam in the match of the night. The featured match, or one of the featured matches, I should say. 
And then this past week on SmackDown, he loses to Dean Ambrose clean of all people. Dean freaking Ambrose. Dean Ambrose! The same guy that six years ago refused to put over the Nexus at SummerSlam and had to do things the John Cena way. Ask Edge and Christian about, or Edge and uh, Jericho about that one. Is now losing to Dean Ambrose on SmackDown. And I gotta be honest, I'd love to think nothing more than that the WWE has learned from the errors of the past. They realize Cena's pushing 40, he's not gonna be there forever, that he's got interest in other places, that the future better be now, because if it's not now, it's going to be never. And when he's gone, you're gonna be in a really, really bad way because you've programmed so many people to believe he's the standard for over the decade. Now, magically, he's not there. And at the same point in time, the company themselves have programmed themselves to believe that he is the gold standard for over the decade. They won't know what the fuck to do without him. So in some ways, they've gotten over the Cena obsession. And you've seen it lately in the programming. They feature him, but they don't overfeature him. He's in programs that matter, but it's not the predominant only story on the show. You know, maybe they finally realize that it can't just be about him. Maybe they realize that it's not healthy for the product. Maybe somebody's realized that, hey, he has been a prop, but he hasn't been a particularly productive prop for us. And we've lost a lot more money than we should have with him over the top over the years. Even if we've done things based off of sheer volume of product and quantity of product to mask that in order to be able to turn kind of a semi-bogus profit, Maybe they're learning. Man, maybe it's John Cena learning and realizing that, hey, I've been at the top for so long, there's a diminishing return there. And if I step back and take a step back and allow some other guys to get over and some other guys to shine, it doesn't just have to be about me. But at the end of the day, it can still be beneficial to me and be about me. And I can get a longer run at the top in spurts and spots and moments by doing this. You know, sometimes we learn as time goes along. You know, I'm 35 now. I sure feel like I know a lot more than I did at 25, which is the same feeling I had at 25 compared to when I was 15. You know, so sometimes we get those epiphanies as we go along in life and the realization hits us and like, oh my God, this stuff needs to change and change dramatically. I'd love nothing more than to think that. However, maybe it's the cynic in me. Maybe I'm just too jaded or maybe I'm just learning from the WWE's history, I'm not fully buying into this bullshit just yet. It'd be great to think on the one hand that Cena's going to do this at times. Now, I don't want Cena to lose to everybody because ultimately that's not the best way to get a return on that decades plus investment on John Cena at the top. Having him job out to everybody is not the answer. Changing things about his character would be a better answer, but jobbing him out to everybody is not the answer. Now, some might get a sick, sadistic pleasure out of seeing that and enjoy it greatly and be like, ha ha! And I get that and I understand it. But it's not the best thing for the business because now you're basically just taking a decade and flushing it down the toilet and you don't want to do that either. You know, I, 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 I'd love to buy into this and believe this. How, I just know, though, at the end of the day, those old habits die hard. And for both John Cena and the WWE standpoint, I still wonder if there are ulterior motives at play, if there's more underneath the surface, more behind the scenes, a bigger picture about to unfold in the months to come that will make this seem like one big tease of an alternate universe when ultimately you get back, dragged back eventually into the reality that is the John Cena-led WWE universe. I, I don't wonder. I just wonder if... Him jobbing out to Styles or losing to him clean, if you want to put it that way, at SummerSlam and losing clean to Dean Ambrose is, if nothing else, just a temporary punishment by Vince McMahon and the WWE for Cena going off and doing the ESPYs, for going off and doing the reality show on Fox, for going off and doing some stuff on the uh, morning talk show circuit. Since he's doing projects outside of the WWE, maybe they think like Cena's starting to get that rock bug in him and he thinks he can be bigger than he actually can be and they want to kind of humble him and bring him back down to earth a little bit. You know, this in some ways reeks of Vince McMahon just sending a message that even though you're seeing it, and even though I have this hard on for your Jort Johnson for this past decade, at the end of the day, torn quads and all, I'm still Vincent Kennedy McMahon, damn it! And nobody's bigger than the brand or me! It feels like in some ways, and like I said, maybe I'm just being a little too jaded and cynical here, but it feels like they're just trying to teach him a little bit of a lesson.
That's what it feels like. And with a guy like Cena, even when they try to teach him a lesson, that lesson usually doesn't get learned and it doesn't last very long. Class doesn't stay in session for, for much longer. Um, I wonder sometimes if they're only doing this because he's on SmackDown, because he's not on the flagship show, they don't feel the same pressure to put him in a spot and they don't care as much because he's on SmackDown because they feel even if the viewership numbers are similar, not as many people are paying attention to it, not as many people care. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Maybe it does, but we are talking about the WWE here, and at the end of the day, they will still always view Raw as the flagship standard bearer, gold standard show, even if SmackDown started doing more ratings and was, in theory, a lot of ways the A show, which it could be shaping up to be for the time being. I wonder if the only reason Cena's doing this is because he's on SmackDown, after so many years of largely being on Raw where this didn't happen. Also think about it this way, too is that John Cena, at the end of the day, almost always gets his. What happened with Brock Lesnar a couple years ago, not included, you know, when Kevin Owens beat him and Kevin Owens' debut pay-per-view match for the WWE, Cena got the better of him at the end of the day. You know, so often it seems like, you know, John Cena, when they come back, they always find a way to make sure he gets his. Even when you say, oh, when he lost to Daniel Bryan, he never really got it back. Well, a few months later, they plunked him right back into the title scene with Alberto Del Rio, didn't they? I'm, I'm just saying, they, they find a way creatively, even if it's not directly. Indirectly, they find a way for John Cena to almost get his. And I wonder if this is being used as nothing more than a storytelling element in a company that is lacking storytelling elements today on a significant level, is being used as some type of way to soften Cena a little bit and to get a little more sympathy behind them and tear them down just a little bit to build up the monster to come in the future. Because here's what I mean. WrestleMania 33 is coming up. John Cena sitting on 15 world titles. Unless he gets hit by a bus or walks away tomorrow, at some point in time, he's going to tie Ric Flair and eventually surpass Ric Flair for most world title victories in a career. He's going to get to 16. He's going to get to 17. At the end of the day, he'll probably push somewhere around 20. I find it very hard to believe that he's all of a sudden just going to stop at 15. And I find it very, very hard to believe that the WWE is not going to want to send their own message and try to push him as the greatest of all time, which they've been doing subliminally and not so subliminally over the past couple of years on their television programming and pay-per-view programming anyways. You've got WrestleMania 33. They're going to look at it and saying they need a main event. They've pulled Cena out of the past couple of WrestleMania main events. They may be softening him up to give him that main event spot or that world title spot, since there's going to be two world title matches now at WrestleMania 33. They might just be doing all of this bullshit to soften him up so that way come WrestleMania, or even before if they want to rush through it and get to the Royal Rumble, they'll have him come back at AJ Styles and he'll win back the WWE Championship. Because at this moment, do you fully buy into AJ Styles carrying the WWE title, the most important belt in that company, all the way through to WrestleMania 33, walking in as the champion? Hmm... I would if they said John Cena was going to face off against him and they were going to send some WWE versus TNA message at that show because that's the type of guy that Vince is. I just warn all of you. While you might be enjoying at the moment, Cena's putting people over and think this is something good. For the moment, it could be. And it could be a positive. Now, if they keep doing it, it's not necessarily a positive. How ironic. Talking about he needs to put people over. Now, if I sit there and say he puts too many people over, that's a problem. But it potentially can be. You have to be cautious of that. Because you could diminish the return that you could get off of over a decade of investment. But just be very, very careful. This could be one big massive trick. And one big swerve. The WWE and John Cena are pulling on you. They could be pulling the wool over your eyes. I would not be surprised... If Cena is in one of the two world title matches at WrestleMania, and if he's not walking out with one of the two world titles at WrestleMania, so that way he can tie Ric Flair, and the WWE can really start pushing the propaganda of him being the greatest of all time. <laughs> you wanted him for years to put people over. He's starting to do it. But be careful what you wish for. <laughs> you might not like the path that this is heading down. I'm just saying.